Happy Friday, everyone. Weekend's almost here, and we're gonna ease you into the weekend with some strength work today. So what we got going on for you guys today, uh, before we get to the work sets, we're gonna work on a little bit of warm-up and some balance work with a little bit of core. So we have our plank to bear squat, three to five reps, back scale raise, uh, five per side, we do a side scale for three per side, and a front scale for five per side. Nice little scale sandwich going through that sequence into our single leg bridge for five, and then a tuck hollow with extension for 20 seconds. You're gonna hit that up for one to two rounds, just to kind of get the body kind of squared away, ready for action. And then you're gonna tackle this first work set. This first work set's gonna be a little bit more lower body focused. Three to five rounds, depending on what you wanna take down for volume and or time frame you have today. Goblet slash front squat, you know, hold the dumbbell in whatever position. Eight reps at a three second down, three second pause, three second stand. From there, you're gonna move into a weighted bridge for 20 reps, no tempo, but just nice and smooth for 20. Dumbbell standing march for 60 seconds, and then a foot assisted pistol for eight reps per side at a 303 tempo. So slowing that pistol down and taking those legs out a little bit more, get a little quad burn going on today. And then you're gonna rest for 90 seconds or more, depending on what you need. You'll hit that through, you'll move into that next phase for three to five rounds, You'll then do our tempo push-up, right? So you hit five to eight reps at a 303 tempo, floor pike hold, 30 to 60 seconds in that hold, or accumulate that hold, Dump, dumbbell temp, or tricep rollback. I'll demonstrate that one for you guys. It's a good time, a little tricep load there as well, for 15 reps, and then you're gonna rest again for 90 seconds or more, depending what you need. I'll also have a little optional uh, primer for the upper body if you'd like to. Uh, your body's gonna be pretty warm, but if you wanted to give yourself a little primer before you tackle that upper body piece, I'll have that on the workout description for you as well. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun today. We'll get you ready, kickstart off the weekend with some nice strength, and just let that body move a little bit uh, after the week we've had. All right, you guys, let's get you warmed up. Let's get those feet under the hips. We're gonna take the arms big and tall. We're gonna reach it over to one side. Come back up, we're gonna reach it over to the other side. From here, we're going to come back to center. We're going to shrug those shoulders. Come back down. We're going to scratch our back and then reach through the elbow. We'll come back up. Big reach up overhead. Scratch your back. We'll reach through the elbow. And come back up. Big stretch. And forward fold. We're going to touch those toes. We're going to walk up those shins. Come down. Plant both hands. Step back into your plank. Tucking through those ribs. Pressing through those shoulders. We're gonna pull those hips back into our down dog. Then we're gonna come back into our plank and step one foot up into our lizard. We're gonna lower the knee, press the hip, come back to center, press the hip, back to center, and press the hip, back to center. We're gonna press the leg back, step back into our down dog, setting those shoulders and reaching those hips. We come back into our plank, setting that good plank, step the other foot up. Nice and square in those hips, we're gonna lower the knee, press the hip, to center, press the hip, back to center, and press the hip, back to center. We're gonna straighten out the leg, step back into our down dog, reaching those hips, come back into our plank, and we're gonna tiptoe those feet up, and we're gonna roll ourselves up, big tall stretch, then we're gonna reach, Let's get yourself warmed up. If you want to pause the video and take down a little bit more gentle kind of warm up for yourself, please do so. Besides that, we're going to move into our next piece of work, which is going to work on some balance work. But first things first, we're going to start off with a plank to bear squat. So like our plank to down dog, very similar shoulder engagement, so that armpit pointing to the floor, pressing into the ground, but we're going to keep our hips low. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get myself into my plank position. I'm going to step my feet into my squat stance, a little narrower dependent. I'm going to pull my ribs and hips together, press through my shoulders, and I'm going to pull myself straight back in between my ankles and then push straight back into that plank. Finding that good hollow and then I'm going to press back into my squat and then press straight out into that nice hollow. So I'm trying to keep my hips nice and low and level and going as deep as I can. But the big thing is, it's going to be ankle mobility, hip mobility, and the 
ability to stabilize through the shoulder that's going to allow you to go further back in that bear squat. So it's a lot of shoulder that's involved there. So listen to them, set them before you move back into that bear squat so that they're stable and strong. Our next movement, we come up to a standing position and we're going to work our back scale. So I'm going to turn to the side. The back scale, we have a slightly straighter leg than the RDL and we hinge kind of more like that bird that goes down into the water. So I set my hands, I shift my weight to one, to one side, and I'm going to hinge, taking it as far down as I can, as a hold, and I stand tall. So I'm more rotating and hinging around this one leg as a, my whole torso and body kind of flows up and down. So we want to make sure we're taking our time, we're allowing ourselves to hinge, flatten out if we can, and come back. If though, balance-wise, this is as far as you can get in your back scale, that's okay, because we're in a nice straight back position, long body, and we're maintaining our life, a nice long straight torso. So keep that in mind, only go as far as you can balance, and keep that body straight. A nice thing to imagine is that you have a PVC taped right from your heel to the top of your shoulder, and you can only move as one piece. After that, we're going to move into the side scale. So I'm going to find my weight, and I'm going to set that up a little bit, and I'm going to find my hands wherever I need them. I like to keep them on my abs so I can keep them tight and set, it's a good reference. And I'm going to point my toe, so the top of my toe is pointing straight ahead, and I'm going to lift, and I'm going to come back down. I'm trying not to lean too much, and I'm trying not to whip my leg up. I'm trying just to go from here, lift, come back down with control. So there's not a lot of sound as I come down. It's just lift, touch for control. And we're trying to keep a straight line from heel, knee, and shoulder, right up that body. Just so we're not leaning, trying to get the leg higher. We want to use the glute and that hip to do so. And then last but not least, we do the front scale. So the front scale, I'm going to turn back this way so you can see my balancing leg. My balancing leg, I want to keep strong and straight. So as I lift my leg, this leg stays nice and straight. We have to watch out for the buckle. And if we're buckling, one of two things is happening. We're either using momentum to get the leg up, or we're just trying to go too high. And the hamstrings and the hips say, no, 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 I can't go any further like this. I need to give somewhere. And it gives into that balancing leg. So only take it as high as you can maintain that nice straight leg. Sometimes it just involves us squeezing our glutes and engaging that leg a little bit more, and we can get a little bit more height out of that front scale. But again, controlling it up, controlling it down, so we're not getting that slapping sound on the floor. From there, we're gonna lay down on our back. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get myself into my bridge position. So my heels are just outside of my fingers. I'm gonna pick my favorite leg. I'm gonna lift that leg up, and I'm gonna set my hands, get a little tight, and I'm going to squeeze and lift, just keeping my hips level and square, and lower straight down. And I wanna give myself a little pause at the top of each of those movements and at the bottom, okay? So that we're owning each part of the movement. My shoulders and my foot are the two bases for weight, weight bearing. My head and neck are touching the floor, but they're not bearing any load from my body as I lift my hips up. So try not to go so high that you're putting all the load onto your neck. Let those shoulders do the work for you. We're gonna hit five per side, giving yourself a pause on each position on those bridges. Last but not least in this warm-up piece, we're gonna go back to that tuck hollow because that core and those hamstrings are super important today. So I'm gonna give myself a big stretch. I'm gonna pull my ribs and hips together at the same time pulling my knees into my chest and my shoulders to my knees, establishing the tuck first. Then I'm gonna start extending those legs as straight as I can and pulling those heels to your bum. Extending and pulling those heels to your bum. And just working on that nice, smooth extension and relaxing position. We're not really relaxing the core, but we do get to relax the hamstrings as we pull our heels to our glutes. So work on that little pause at the top, full extension, and then give them a little break. Extension, a little break. Quick recap on that first piece. We have one to two rounds. Plank to bear squat for three to five reps. Into our back scale raise for five aside side scale for three aside, and then our front scale for five aside. Then we get to lay down. We're gonna work through a single leg bridge for five
side per side, and then our tuck hollow with extension for 20 seconds of steady flow. One to two rounds, pause the video, take that down, get some heat going in those legs, those cores, find that body, and now we're gonna move into our first work set, which is gonna kickstart off with a goblet or a front squat. So what we got going on for you guys, I'm gonna grab my dumbbell. So you can hold the dumbbell wherever you'd like to today, either goblet position under the chin, it's keeping us upright, or front squat position. So the dumbbell resting on the back of the shoulder and that dumbbell up on about 45 degrees. Regardless of the position, the squat is the same. Same mechanics as our air squat. We're just giving a little bit more engagement into this arm or giving a little bit more attention to pressing into the dumbbell a little bit as we go down. So I'm gonna turn to the side. My feet just outside the hips or just outside the shoulders, somewhere in that comfortable squat range for you. Nice and tall, holding that dumbbell. I'm gonna start with the hips shooting towards my heels. My knee's gonna track the toes and my weight's gonna stay right through the midfoot. And I'm gonna stand tall. And we're gonna work through a nice tempo of a three second down, three second pause. So my hips go to my heels, I stay tall, nice three second down, I hold for a little pause, staying through my midfoot, and then I stand right through that midfoot the entire time. So I wanna make sure that I'm always keeping my weight through my laces at the bottom and as I press up. If you feel yourself shifting, really take note of maybe it's going a little bit too deep or what do I need to think about on the way down that I'm shifting forward on my toes when I come up. So play with that a little bit. The front squat, same concept, except you'll hold the dumbbell up onto the shoulder. Feet are still in the same stance. I'm gonna set, hips go to the heels, knees track the toes, I stay tall and upright, and I stand tall. If I have two dumbbells, I can do a double dumbbell front squat if I'd like, or if I have a single, I can do four, four in that front squat position. Our next exercise is our weighted bridge. So our weighted bridge, we come back to the floor and I'm gonna use my dumbbell. I'm gonna put it on my hips. My glute, where my heels are just outside my fingers and my feet are kind of in that nice hip to shoulder width apart. I'm just gonna hold this here so it doesn't roll on me. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, lift into that extension for the hip and then lower back down. There's no tempo, but again, a little pause at the top Little pause at the bottom is always nice to show control in that bridge so that we're not just flipping up and down and losing that idea of that engagement through the glutes. So really focus on squeezing the glutes to get the hips to extend and open and not think about pressing down through the feet. Think about squeezing here. And our next exercise is kind of a weird one and you can hold the dumbbell in a couple different ways. You can hold it in a goblet I kind of like to hold it up under my chin like so. It kind of puts it in like kind of a zercher hold position, but you're pulling it in against my chest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stand in place and you lift my elbows, or so my knees, all the way up to my elbows almost. Not so I hit them, but I'm just trying to pull them up nice and high and get that nice standing march back and forth for a whole 60 seconds. I'm gonna try and keep this steady, just nice and smooth, working that nice compression at the hip and working on my single leg balance. I'll do that for 60 seconds. It gets a little burny, especially depending on the dumbbell you're using. So play around with that, have some fun with it. If you're like, I don't really want to use, use a dumbbell for that, just bring your hands up so you're nice and tall, so you stay tall and upright, and you can work on that standing high knee. You can work on that same kind of position, working on that nice hip compression and that high step. Because afterwards, we're gonna gas out those quads more. We're gonna work that foot-assisted pistol. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn sideways. I'm gonna take one foot and place it back behind for the toe. And I'm gonna keep it pretty close, just like we would do for our, our single leg RDL, the foot assist. Except instead of hinging, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squat. And I'm gonna take my hip down towards my heel. We're working at a tempo on this again. So I'm gonna think about my squat mechanics. Base my weight through that front foot. I'm gonna take it down, hip to heel, three, two, one little beat and then press through that foot to stand. And what I'm trying to do is execute my good squat mechanics, staying tall and upright, weight through the midfoot the entire time, knee tracks the toe, and then I stand nice and smooth through that leg. And I'm gonna take my time for eight per side of that 303 tempo. It's gonna burn, but I want you to think about taking it as deep as you can maintain position. 
So if you find that you set yourself up and you start to do that squat and you're like three, two, and you're like shifting forward onto the toe and the heel's coming up, we don't want to go further than that. We want to make sure that we're squatting to the best of our abilities with our clean mechanics. After the foot assisted pistol for a side, you'll rest 90 seconds and then you'll do it again for three to five rounds. So we have a goblet squat or a front squat, eight reps, three second down, three second pause, three second stand, weighted bridge for 20, into our dumbbell standing march for 60 seconds, and then eight per side, foot assisted pistol at a 303 tempo. Three down, three up, rest 90 seconds, or a little bit more if you need a little bit more time. Pause the video, take down that lower body piece, have fun with it, enjoy it. I'm gonna get you going with that next phase of work. We're gonna talk about our tempo push-up. So our first work set um, starts off with our tempo push-up. And we can work off of a counter, we can work off an ottoman chair, or the floor. So if you've been working off the floor, um, keep in mind that tempo is our primary focus. So if you're like, ooh, I can't do tempo ones on the floor just yet, then back it off a little bit more to your, to your ottoman or your counter so we can work on that good control all the way through. But if you are working from the floor, what we're gonna look at is get yourself set up in our good plank. So our first variation, I tuck my ribs and hips, press through my shoulders, and I'm gonna lower forward and down, keeping those elbows at about a 45. So I come forward and down, three, two, one. I touch, one, two, and three. If you're looking at that going, well, I can get the lower, but I don't quite have the press from my toes. That's fine. We can go to variation number two. Same tempo, same setup. So hip, ribs and hips, shoulders pressing up to the sky. I lower down, three, two, one. I keep the tension, drop my knees down, one, two, three, up to my toes to restart the next press. So I always finish the rep at the top of the knees, or sorry, at the top of the uh, plank before I start the next one. If you're looking at that going, I don't have that strength for the lower or the push just yet, but I can go from my knees. That's perfect, right? We'll take it from that position. We start same position in our plank, establish the hollow, establish the shoulders, then I'll lower my knees straight down, and I'll take it down forward and down. Three, two, one, and one, two, three. Regardless of the variation of push, we want to keep the shoulders down. We want to keep them away from here. Sure, we have a neck the entire time, and we want to really focus on that hollow, so pulling the ribs and hips together the entire time. The push up, although it focuses mostly on the upper body, is a full body exercise, so we want to recruit everything we can to make it as efficient as we can. Our next exercise goes right into those arms again into our floor pike holds. So we're going to hold for 30 to 60 seconds. I'm going to set myself up in my tabletop with my knees together and my toes curled under. Are going to be underneath my shoulder and I'm going to press through them to get that active upper back. And I'm going to pull my ribs and hips together. Then, keeping my shoulders over my hands, I'm going to press my hips up to the sky. And I can tiptoe my feet a little closer if I like, but I'm trying to keep my shoulders over my hand. My armpits pointing back towards my toes and my eyes kind of loosely looking towards my feet as well. So, we're pressing into the floor. We're pointing that armpit towards the, our, our legs so we get that good, strong, stable shoulder the entire time. And we're gonna hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. Now, if you're holding this and you feel things go bleh, or you lose your core position, come out of it. We wanna make sure that we're banking good time in good position. So keep that in mind as we play. All right, now, last but not least, we have our dumbbell tricep rollback. So I only have one dumbbell here right now, so I'm going to show you what it looks like with a single. But you can do it with two. I lay down on my back, like my bridge. I'm going to press my low back into the floor. I'm going to press my, my arm up to the sky. From here, just like a bench press. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to bend at the elbow, bringing the dumbbell back to my shoulder, keeping the elbow up. And then I'm going to take the top of the dumbbell now to the floor or to the bench, whatever I'm on. And then I'm going to pretend like I'm throwing it up overhead. I'm not letting go though, I'm just using all one motion. So I break at the elbow, keeping the elbow up, dumbbell comes to the shoulder, I lower it to the floor, and extend my arm. Shoulder, floor, extend. Shoulder, floor, extend. Now I'm going to work 
repeat that for 15 reps per side, or with two, I just do the same thing. I come back with both to the shoulder, elbows are still pointing up, I take them back to the floor, and then extend both at the same time. So the best example I can give you is that throwing arm, throwing I do. So I, I'm laying on my back right now, I pull the dumbbells back to my shoulder, kind of like a front rack position, and then I'm gonna take the dumbbells, touch the floor, and then I'm gonna extend. So I come back to the shoulder, dumbbell touches, extend. So the coming back is a little bit slower, and then the extend is pretty steady and smooth. So have some fun with that, you guys. It's a cool little exercise. We wanna make sure that we're using a weight that we can move well with. If you have too heavy of a dumbbell, you can do with a single dumbbell as well. And we just get back in that same position. And what I do is I come back, I touch the dumbbell to the floor, and then I extend. So I bend it down to a 90, or just before my forehead. I take it back so my elbows go back, and then I extend. So if I have a heavy dumbbell at home and I can't do with a single, single, uh, sorry, two hands and dumbbells, I'll just take one dumbbell, hold it by the bells, work it to that 90, come up, and then extend. So we can work it both ways depending on what you have access to for your load. All right. Quick recap on that upper body piece. We have three to five rounds of work. Tempo push-up for wherever you do your push-ups. We have five to eight reps at a 303 tempo. So three seconds down, three seconds up. That gets pretty spicy. So pick your place for your push-up that you can execute that tempo well. Then you're gonna go into an isometric floor, floor hold for that floor pike hold, 30 to 60 seconds, accumulating good time in those positions. And then a dumbbell tricep rollback for 15 reps total count, um, or 15 per side, depending on if you're doing a single arm or two hands. Rest 90 seconds or a little bit more depending on what you're you needing for in terms of your, your rest count. If you need more, take it. If not, take a little less if you want. But have some fun with these work sets, you guys. are going to get a nice set of movement flow, especially after the week we've had. It's been a busy week. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope you enjoy your Friday. All right? Move for quality, you guys. Have lots of fun, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.